Good day. This is the Eye of the Storm podcast with the big picture technical update for the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ 100 being recorded on Saturday, January the 27th, 2024. Well, it continued to be an interesting week within the markets. The S&P and the NASDAQ, along with the Russell and the Dow, continued to work through their individual counts, but collectively to reach what I'm continuing to look at as a major top in terms of the S&P and the NASDAQ in an irregular B wave, primary B wave. And within the Dow and the Russell, I also believe that it's going to be finishing uh, the primary B waves. And in the Russell in particular, uh, there's a very strong chance that that primary B wave is already complete and it's just actually putting in a uh, second wave of a continuing primary C wave down. So it's up in the air right now. And I don't necessarily cover that within this update, uh, but that is out there yet to be determined. Now, starting here with the SPX and the cash market in the S&P, the market continues to move to new all-time highs. And that would be above what we saw in January of 2022, where the market reached a high at 48.18. And so as of last week, uh, the market reached a high at 49.06, almost 49.07. So we continue to build within a an intermediate C wave as a part of a primary B wave. So just kind of reviewing again, the larger picture. Uh, so again, if you're first time coming in and checking out my work, on the on the largest picture I have and I'm showing is on the weekly, a weekly up to a uh, weekly chart. And I show that at that January high, we completed cycle degree three. So a cycle three. And that, that puts us in a cycle degree fourth wave, which will come out as an uh, on a primary degree, an ABC. So we completed the primary A wave in October of 2022. And so we remain within the primary B wave, and that will consist of of its own intermediate degree, ABC. So you can see I have uh, intermediate wave A, intermediate wave B, which did complete in October of 2023. So kind of interesting how your primary wave A completed in October of 2022, primary wave B completed in October of 2023, not even in the same area, but in the same month. So Right now, are we building to where the markets tend to bottom in a cycle or just in their current moves in October to be determined? But within now, within this intermediate C wave, there will consist of five waves of minor degree, of which we have, in my view, completed minor one, two, three, and four. So I'm going to start to bring this down. Now going to a two-year chart. Again, you can see here is the primary A wave completion. And then we have intermediate A, intermediate wave B. We're inside the wave. And so we have minor wave one, minor wave two, minor wave three, minor wave four. And I believe in within the minor fifth wave, we have completed minute waves one, two, and three. And we remain within a minute fourth wave. And then, so what we have left is number one, the completion of that minute fourth wave. And then we start to rally in a minute fifth wave, which will complete minute five, minor five, intermediate wave C, and that primary B wave. All right, so now that I'm down here on the daily chart, we have our Fibonacci extensions or our estimates for where this intermediate C wave could come in. So what's left is that we have where wave C would be equal to wave A, and that is at 5,219. 5,219. So we can actually probably just call it 5,220 in that area. 
Now that's where intermediate wave C would equal intermediate wave A, and that's pretty common. Above that level, next we would have a much higher level where wave C would be equal to 1.618 of wave A, and that comes in much higher at 5,908. Now, that's up there because on a Fibonacci basis, that's what would be next if we get a strong enough break above 5220. But we haven't even gotten close to 5220 yet. So hard to say. And it's just there as an extension. It is not an indication of where the market is going or probably will go. It is just an extension. So bringing it back down, I'm going to drop out of the daily. I'm going to go down and start taking a look in here. Now, within this, just so that we can see, I also have now put in, I mean, just see if I can open this and see if you want to agree with me. There we go. You can see that I have, there's the B, but I can come in and I can put in, here's minor one, two, three, four. So we're working on minor five. And I can just drop this down like this, and that should begin to, I'm going to bring this over to a different screen. And what it does is it just makes it larger. So you can all see these internals. Uh, so what I've just done is I've condensed it off of a 34 inch screen and put it back down on the 20, 27 inch screen. So it's a little bit different. And so we can see the internals a little bit clean, cleaner. So again, here we are, that Intermediate C wave within it, five waves of minor degree, where we have one, two, three, and four. So what I was showing is that <clears throat> we can start to, we already have put up the uh, expected move for minor wave five. And so we do that by look, comparing it to minor wave one. So that is what Elliot taught us. And so the fib, the corresponding fibs are going to be minor five as it relates to minor wave one. Now, the most common calculation is where five equals one, and that would be right here at 4969. Now, that's still out there, and that could very possibly, very, very possibly be the, the level that's going to complete this whole picture. Now, what then becomes more important if we're looking up one up on the intermediate degree it's like, well, it didn't reach that 100%, which is the most common. It's like, that's true. But what it did do is it completed the cycle in terms of the, the wave count. I have five waves up, and if it all matches in, whether it reached there or not, we start to use the lower fibs or the fibs within it as we're counting out those five waves. Now, if we get more of a blow-off type top. And that would be consistent with, we, we, we have a lot of uh, the big name earnings reports coming out next week. We have the Fed uh, meeting that will get a decision of one way or the other, plus a press conference. So it's a decision slash update. And that's on Wednesday of next week. So here we are in that we are looking at what could possibly put the market up to or down on any of the catalysts. So what, what could those catalysts be? Of course, the, the earnings reports, which I'm going to go over in a little bit, and also the Fed decision. So I'll go over all the economic numbers and, and all the major uh, earnings reports that are going to be coming out next week. So it should be a big week for market movement, for decision-making, for you know coming to a completion point, or all kinds of things coming to a head here. So in other words, I'm also wanting to include that if we get into where everything is just coming out rosy, then we could have more of an explosive blow-off type of a top. And then so if we start to exceed 49.69 or 49.70, well, what's our next level? 1.618, which then, I'll show you, that level is... 50, 50, come on, just get it right there, 5147. So 5150, let's call it. That would be for the minor wave five. Now we also have, again, because we are in, in a regular B wave, and that's on the primary degree, 
And what the irregular suggests is that, well, this B wave has gone and made a new all-time high above the existing high, which was 48.18 basis, the cash market. So we're moving into that territory we already have. So an extended would suggest that we get up to that 51.50 area. That's basis, the cash. And the reason would be is because that is the most common FIB uh, level that could be reached in this retracement. So it's an irregular B wave because the, the B wave is retracing wave A. It's exceeded the starting point of wave A. So therefore, irregular produces a new high or depending on the position, a new low. In this case, it's a new high. Now, so we have that number. So we then above that, we have that 100% for wave C at 52.19. But continuing to count for this minor fifth wave, if we blast through 51.50, well, then we're getting up into the 1.382, which again is flipping back up to the primary B wave. And that comes in at 53.25. And then for as far as minor wave five, we have 2.618, which is 54.34. Now, again, these are just estimates. These are just Fibonacci levels. They're extensions. It's not suggesting that that's what the market is going to do, just continue to extend higher. But should it we break different levels, this would be the next level that the market could reach. Again, everything then depends on what the structure, so what the actual wave count is going to be showing us. Right now, we remain in that minor fifth wave. So indeed, if this minute wave five of minor five is going to begin to extend, which it can, and now I'm going to just bring this down one more, and we're going to take a look at it on the four-hour chart. So there we have it. So there's one, two, three, four. One, two, three. Now we got up here. And wave four is actually, and I'll get when, once I drop it down to the hourly chart, I'll show you that wave four is likely going to be a flat. So it doesn't look like much there. When we drop it down, it, it's kind of very, very interesting. But I'm pretty confident what, that wave three is complete. The uh, the possibilities that it's not, mm, yes, it exists. Yes, it would be there. But the market would have to turn and actually just really start to go up pretty quickly without really declining any additional. So, but, so if I'm satisfied with the wave three and then wave four would be expected to come back down to 48.65, right where that low, uh, 48.60 to 48.58, somewhere in that area. So where the cash market bottomed and in, in the A wave down, and I'll get to that in just a moment. And then we have the, so we're looking for the C wave down and then that minute wave five to begin. So again, it really kind of wraps itself around 49.69. Now, again, just in the options, I have been I've been hearing and not receiving any confirmation via anybody else but other spot gamma. So let me just start by saying that that they're reporting that there is a call wall, which is just like the wall. It's exactly what it could be, you know, at five thousand. So a lot could happen if it touches 5,000 and, and manages to take out all that sits there to stop it from going any higher. If it breaks through, then we could see something really dynamic in terms of, you know, just the gamma explosion that will occur should that happen. Now I'm going to drop this one more time down to the hourly chart. And now we're looking inside all of this move. So again, we have the one, the two, here is that. And now I'm waiting for the four. And once I have that four, I'll be able to add one more level. Now, since I am expecting a flat correction, there's the bottom of wave A, right? A, A, B, C, B, right? The cash made a, a new high. So we could, we could declare a, a an, irregular wave four, irregular B wave again inside this small fourth wave because we went to a new high. 
and that high was 4906, almost 4907. So that high doubled here. So A, B, and we come back down in a flat. So I'm still considering it a flat, even though we went slightly above the level, uh, because to, to declare it a, an irregular, I will show you what it would, what it would, well, let me just, oh boy. Uh, okay, get back over to my charts. Thank you very much. I want to go here and I'm going to add, oops, just my retracements and put it right down there. There, there, thank you. And then add to it. So I will take all of these put these back in. So, so what we're basically looking for is 1.236, which comes in at, and this would be for wave four, no, mind you, at 49.12 and then 49.18. That's 1.236, 1 1.382. That is to say, again, as I just said earlier, if this fourth wave and the B wave portion of it is still in progress, which I do not believe that it is. And, and that is, I can go down to, I got to drop this actually down to like a 15 minute chart and then open it up again here. So you can see one, two, three, four, five. So that kind of seals the fate here, but stranger things have taken place in this market that I will leave open, but like I said, <clears throat> the market cannot decline anymore. It needs to go and head and break above 4903, break above 4907, and get itself up into here. So that's a big ticket. That's a big if without first going down to here. Now, if we decline and we reach 4865, I would allow for a little bit deeper, A, because it went above. So about five points below 65, so 48, 60. But I would think that we could start to get some acceleration. The market's playing around the 50, close back above it. If it breaks below and then breaks below the 100, both of those simple moving averages on the 15-minute chart, then I'd look for a little bit more acceleration to the downside. Now, the market actually did appear that in, in that extra, you know, the cash market closed on the towards the downside. We did see some additional selling after the cash market closed. So on Friday afternoon, and I, I think a lot of that was just a uh, basis of how uh, everybody was coming out of that expiration. So we get a lot of movement after that. But it also could have just been getting out. So I'm actually going to take this one off and leave it to that we're looking for the ABC down. Now, considering that, let's just say we get to 48.65, and that's where the low of wave A is. So I'm going to come up here, and I'm going to bring this up, and I'm going to bring it over here to 48.65. 65. I'm going to stick it right there because that's where I can get it clean. So now we're looking at if that's what wave four does, comes down and gets a nice clean flat, then here are our numbers. Way, uh, minute wave five would be equal to minute wave one, which is the most common at 49.82.83. Now we still have 49.69 for minor wave five. If we go up in minute wave five and we get up to here, this is definitively still in play. Even though it succeeded, we can consider minor wave five, minute wave five, both done up into here. Again, we will be looking at the structure of that fifth wave. If we go even higher, we have a test of that call wall. So, Minute wave five breaks above these levels, still in an extended fashion. We have 1.618, 5,055. And 
just breaking, if indeed we have that strength of a call wall at 5,000, if we push through that via something the Fed does, via some of the earnings that are be coming out on Wednesday or Thursday. So we've, we've got a lot of catalysts sitting there waiting that could drive the market strongly in either direction. This is the important thing to bear in mind. So upside, we've got it covered with these levels. All right. So of note, let's take a look. Let me just kind of pull these up a little bit so we can see them. These are the internals, the market internal, internals. And here we have the market making a new all-time high. And then we go back, but a much lower high in terms of the relative strength. So where was the relative strength here? Hard to find. So in, in essence, volumes were low. Things just got pushed because of individual underlying component, component companies. And a lot of it was the MAG-7. A lot of it was Netflix. So again, what does it tell us about the market internals? Will it find enough strength or more broad-based strength to really push? So every time it were to push, it's not breaking out on, accordingly to what the RSI is telling us. The MACD, same deal. Now get that. Here was the, the, the high was back in the uh, uh, January the 22nd, 21st, 22nd. We got a lower high when it hit the top of wave three and a much lower high when it hit 4907. Lower high, lower high and declining MACD. These two, in my book, are warning signs, warning signs, flashing the red light, caution, be cautious about what this market is doing. It's not got the internal strength to pull it off, let's say, to have an extended broad-based move. Now, you want to hear, oh, market's breaking out. It's like, mm, is it really? Breaking out would be broad-based, not dependent on a handful of stocks. So moving averages, 200. This is the hourly, kind of flat. Kind of flat on the 100. 50 still rising, 28 flat after last week. Now, let's jump back down and go back over to the ES. And... Uh, once again, I'm going to run it over here. I'm going to pull it up so that I can go back, and we're going to do the same exercise. We're going to take a look at the weekly chart. Uh, don't pay any attention, I know, because this will make sense once we get back down. Same deal. There is primary A. We're in primary B. We have intermediate A and intermediate B complete. Uh, that B wave was an extended ABC, XABC coming down and now we are going to go immediately right down to our daily chart and we can see let me just pull this open so we're making this a little bit bigger that we're with inside we have an a or excuse me inside that c wave we have minor one two three four and now look how clean it looks over here in the futures market where we have minute one two and three within the minor fifth wave up and then I'm going to drop this down one more time and bring the chart back over to my other screen so that we can now look at all of this internal, internal moves. So here we have minute one and two, minute three, minute four in progress. Now, within the futures market, yep, it did push and make a new high here, but... But 
minimally. So let me just kind of open this up and then we can take a peek. There, this high is 4932.75. This high is 4934.25. It's not a, a major new jump here. And in fact, from from Thursday, it was 4933.25 to 3470, 34.25. So it's a whole, it's a big point. So within the within the futures market, I'm like, oh, it's flat. It's a flat because these highs are 3275 and 3325. So we equaled it basically, beat it on 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 Friday morning by a dollar. Nothing to get myself all excited about. It was not a breakout at all. So I'm still considering that this is A, this is B of the minute four. And then we're going to put in a flat correction. So I'm looking for the C wave to bring us back down to 48.89. Now, let me drop this down to the 15 minute chart. And it gets a little bit interesting. Now we can see all of the internals. It all works. Ugly. Very difficult. This was all those diff difficult trading days. What was the market trying to tell us when it did all of that? And then again, here. So it, it was a little crazy, but when it finally was done, so it keeps all of this in corrective mode, so to speak. And then we did one, two, three, four, five. That seals that deal at least until we're done with this wave four. So one, two, three, four, five. One of wave C. Wave two of wave C. We were begun and then the bell rang. And the after hour bell rang for the continuation of wave three of C. And that's what I'm going to be looking for to start our week. Actually, tomorrow during Globex, I would suspect that we, we, we will continue to go down. So what's up next then is we have the 15 minute 200 at 49.09. And I think once that breaks, we'll slide pretty quickly, at least down to 48.98. Ultimately... I think we find our support again right down here at 4888, excuse me, 4889 in that hood, in that neighborhood right there. Now, we're, and, and by the way, that remains 0.236 support for a fourth wave, right? That's what all these numbers are. But could the market run deeper? Yeah, it could. And still, I'd consider it a flat. I mean, the next, if it really breaks solidly below 48.89, our next FIB is 48.61. But again, as I talk about often, what will become more important is not necessarily is it going to get down to 48.61, but the structure that will be in play. If we're dropping, if this is a one and this is a two, and we start to drop significantly, we're going to go through that. And if we're still dropping significantly, and if this is still coming in as a one, two, three, four, five, wave three, well, then, yeah, we're even looking deeper. Then we run into the territory of, okay, where can we not break to keep a fifth wave alive? That number is 4838. The high right there, 4838 from January the 11th. That is where I've marked my new wave one. Wave four cannot overlap the price territory of wave one. That's a major rule from Elliott. We must adhere to it. So what happens, Michael, if it does come down and break 4831 off of this structure? Well, it would put a very strong point that either this completed wave five Right, because it's a slight new high, and in the cash market, it's even a little bit more slight new high. Could that have finished the whole thing? In a push, yes, it could. I don't, I don't believe so because this is just too, too awful. This is like nothing. This is too corrective. Could I turn this into some kind of a diagonal? I imagine somebody's going to tell me they could. But me personally, no. You know, I, I have a bit of a trouble. You know, 
seeing it that way. But I'm going to say again, it's one of my favorite little sayings now, stranger things have happened lately where the market just tosses things out. So again, what's going to be the signal? First of all, if this thing just really starts to fall apart here and doesn't hold at 48.39 and starts to threaten 48.38, 30, so we're not even that far below the 50% level. So I, I don't, I really don't even want it to get down here. But if it's getting down here and it looks like it's within a fifth wave and it looks like it's going to complete, we, we should get 40, 4855 should provide some strong support on the hourly chart. Should. We shall see. Right now, I'm looking for the flat. An extension below that should be held at 382. Start getting below that. We're, we're, it's getting a little edgy. Again, now it's not, I don't think, you know, I'm also stating that I really feel that this fourth wave should finish Tuesday, maybe at some point on Wednesday, but prior to the Fed and prior to the big boys that are going to come out and be reporting next week. Don't forget, we have Apple, Amazon, Meta, Microsoft, Google, and uh, that's it. The balance, NVIDIA is at the end of uh, mid-February to the end of February. And we have some other ones that are coming out a little bit later uh, then. But so we have those major. We have AMD next week as well. So we have Apple, AMD, Amazon, Google, Meta, Microsoft, NVIDIA. Excuse me. Meta and Microsoft. Keep tossing that in there. I'll be going over that list in just a moment. So, okay. So, in the futures market, I'm going to just put it back on the daily and let's take a look at where, where we sit in terms of moving averages. Now, we're well above here, but it did close a little bit with a negative bar. You know, a little bit. Looking for it to come down, finish, and then rally again. So, I'm, I'm looking for it to hold, the daily to hold above the eight. That would give enough. That would give enough push for the fifth wave to get itself going. A break below the eight on the daily would kind of start to turn things a little negative. And again, here we got that one. Can't have it going too far. So once again, that's kind of the story in the S and P. All right, let's go over and take a look at the at the Nasdaq, and we'll start with the cash market in the Nasdaq. And once again. Walk with me as I flip my chart back over to here. And there we go. I'm going to blow it up and I'm going to move it back out to that weekly chart so we can see that big picture in here. I will lower it again so we can read all these letters in between. So again, same deal in the NASDAQ. We finished and the NASDAQ actually hit that high in November of 2021. So the balance of the markets topped out in uh, January of 2022. NASDAQ was just a little bit early. Tends to be that way. So, <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> excuse me again. So cycle wave three completing in November of 2021. Primary wave A of cycle wave four completing in October of 2022. Primary wave B in force since then. We have intermediate wave A of primary B, intermediate wave B of primary wave B completing in October of 2023. So since that time, we have been involved in putting in an intermediate C wave higher to complete the minor, excuse me, the primary wave B. Now, I'm going to drop that down quickly to the daily chart. And now we can see there's the A, there's the B. I'm going to open this up. And, and I'm going to go back down to my other chart. I'll move back over to my other screen, which kind of makes these larger so we can all see. So again, hopefully the resolution is not going to be terrible. If it is, boy, I'm going to be apologizing to you all um, and just flipping the screens. So here we have that intermediate wave C. And we have minor one, two, three, four. We're in minor wave five. 
and same deal. One, two, three. We're in this minute one, two, three. We're in minute wave four. Now here, uh, what are we actually looking at for a fourth wave? So let me go down. Let me put that up. And it's going to go right there. And so I need to just kind of open this up a little bit. So we're looking the the cash market, actually 236, which is where it's been, is going to be 17,421. That's kind of where we get this 236. Um, we have additional support, a little bit higher, but it's not, shouldn't be support. It goes, it goes with a different level. And I need to go over and edit that one and take it out of this. Take it out of the picture for right now. So say okay to that. Now that's gone. So now we have that cleaner. We can see it. 17,404. Cash market. Cash market. So I'm looking for that level or actually can come down below. And the cash, we can get down touching close to 17,286 to 17,243. NASDAQ cash still totally within reason and coming in close to 382. That's going to be the difference basically between uh, the NASDAQ and uh, the S&P. The S&P, I'm looking for 2.236. The NASDAQ looks like it's, it, thus far, it's really only held 0.236. But I'm looking for a little bit more now coming in. And I'm going to show you how or why as I take this now down from the daily. I'll go to the four-hour chart, opening it up. And you can see we got one, two, three, four, five. Get a little bit of a B wave, I think, and then we're starting lower again. So I'm going to pull that in and go one more. I'm going to go down to that daily, right? So there's the high. That is going to be one, two, three, minute three. I'm sorry I didn't label that. I will fill that in. One, two, three. And then we have a one, two, three, four, five down. That's an A wave. So possibly, possibly, because again, the the uh, we saw an uptick and then the market continued lower, as you can see in the futures market, um, after, after the cash market closed. So that's why that's a little bit going to look a little bit different. But we're sitting right above 0.236. So I think the continuation of pushing it down brings us into these areas. Now, I kind of like this one right here, 17,274 down to 243 on the cash market. But I think we still have more. We're going to put a four there, and then we start to rally back up. Now, this is the minor degree, and I got to get rid of all those because those are no longer, they've already been taken out. So, but I do have 618. Now, on the minor degree fifth wave, we've already reached 100%, and we actually come back down, and how going to probably rest by it. So the only thing we got is if this minor five is complete here. I don't think so. I don't think so. But the five down raised the caution flag in terms of the cash market. The futures market. We still have these irregular, the irregular B wave, firmly in force for both the cash market and the futures market. Uh, so the, the first level, most common is 1.236. That's 18,257. Well, we got to start building the doors off of some of these earnings. Now, again, we don't have NVIDIA until the end of the month. So, but where's it going to start from? If they blow the doors off again, where's it start from in terms of where would the NASDAQ be when, by the time they report? So all these things. So we can only go day by day, and I can only go by what I see. Uh, and I cannot forecast out that, like, well, video is going to you know, really blow the doors off. We don't know that. But here is a, just a suggested level if, if we start to continue to break higher with the minor fifth wave. Again, the minute degree count will become vitally important. And I've already got one, two, three, and a four. I'm in that fifth wave. 
It's going to have to be pretty extended, which it could, by the way. It could. It could extend, getting us right through all of this and on up towards 18,000 plus. It could. Now, <clears throat> leaving it down here, if I take this off, in fact, I'm going to take that off and I'm going to go over to the futures market where I do have all of, uh, I thought I did, all of my fibs back on. So I'm going to go back out to at least my four hour chart and come out this way and now start to put in my fibs here. So the first one that I want to put on is this and again first thing i gotta do is i gotta take off 618 and 100 they've been exceeded oops so I take those off so we have that one let me go back out one more time and so i'm yeah i gotta go back out to my daily and now i'm gonna put up for wave c Oops, come on. I took them all off so I could reconstruct and not have all that congestion on my chart. 618 basically, basically has been exceeded. And then and it still comes into play a little bit, but some would consider it support. I'm just going to take it off so that we can see what its next level is going to be. Okay, so we have C wave, we have fifth wave. Now let me drop it back down to that hourly chart and let's take a look. So again, we are, uh, I'm going to go all the way down to that 15 minute chart so that we can see this interior work here. So here is the three, that's the top of three, it's sitting way up there, but that's the top of three. Here's the A, the B, the C, I have wave A. Then I have a B wave, pretty paltry B wave, but I have a B wave. I mean, here. So this is, see this big, big difference between the two markets. Because this B wave in the NAS, in the S&P is flat. And in the NASDAQ, there's no flat. It was a ABC zigzag for wave A, three waves for wave B, and now one, oh, this should be over, one, two, three, four, five, I have five down, ABC, that's a two, and we're starting in the third. So the C wave could be pretty, pretty harried. So again, I'm going to op open this up. And really, <clears throat> what we can run, if we're looking for this, come on. Come on, thank you. 100% is 17,300. Now, one more deal. I just want to put up retracements for wave four. See, if I had this all up and we were looking at those larger charts, you wouldn't be able to see any of the chart because you'd have all of this. So here we are. We've already, we did again break below that 236, which brought us. 17,371 was our next level. And then we bottom in the A, we ran up in the B. Now, what do we got going on? We got a C wave down 100% where wave C would equal wave A is 17,300. Are we in trouble of overlapping? No. That's all the way down at 17,061. Actually, 17,048. This is an extreme, but you can use it if you want to, 57, but I would call it at 48. So that's, we can get down there. 50% level, we definitely can get down, 17,241. But C equals A at 17,300. We closed on Friday at 17,504. Could we have a nice 200 point drop? Yeah. We could. But if they really decide they really don't like some of this stuff, yes, it could get there. They could get there real quickly. 
We've now watched the NASDAQ drop and you know, duck and cover, so to speak, right? Those of us old enough, right? Where we had these air raid drills. I'm going back into the 60s, kids. So, you know, when we were in school and your grammar school, the threat, which is really going back to the 60s, and I apologize, um, the threat of a nuclear bomb hitting the United States because there was this nuclear threat between the so the old Soviet Union and the United States. So we had what they they called these air raid drills, were just out of nowhere. And you would the kids were, we were forced to go out into the hall the, in the school and kneel down and cover our heads, lower our heads and put our hands over our head, as if that was going to protect us from nuclear fallout. But that's what we did. Hence why I come up with the duck and cover type of a mentality when you see them selling off this hard and you see the market and then you see the market do its little recoveries. In any case, in any case, I'm looking at this and I'm thinking, hmm, okay, I still believe that we're in a minute fourth wave. I do believe that this minute fourth wave, don't forget we got the hourly, hourly 200 at 17,323. So our support really is 371, 323, 300. Outside, could it get down to 241? Yeah, it could. But a lot's going to be depending on this structure, right? Because we can get a three, a four, and a five and still end up here and be done. But a four and launch. Now, let's start to review real quick. What do we got coming out? So on Monday, we really don't have any of the MAG-7. So what we, and we don't really have anything super big rocking the world of the markets. Tuesday, the 30th, we have Google and Microsoft. Two rock the world stocks, particularly Microsoft. Now, this is why I'm suspecting that between Monday and Tuesday, if we can finish this fourth wave, my feeling is, is that Microsoft could provide a catalyst to the upside. We know that Microsoft is true, truly taking the lead in a lot of the AI development in the AI world, artificial intelligence. So... You know, they're, they're still delivering new products like Copilot and Arc. So there's a lot coming out of Microsoft, and it could be very, very supportive. What do we also have on Tuesday? Advanced micro devices. Oh, so preview. Is it going to be a preview of what we might expect from NVIDIA? Either way, by the way. So AMD's got its own little problems. Don't forget they got hit last week, but then it kind of you know, it did a recover. So we have, we have AMD on Tuesday. We have, uh, in terms of the non-tech stocks, we have General Motors uh, coming out. We have JetBlue, which I'm not really too concerned about either way. Uh, Mondelez International, which is a part of the NASDAQ. It's a, it's a big stock. It's, it's very high priced. So if it makes a big move one way or the other, it will have some pull on the uh, NASDAQ itself. We have Pfizer, that's for the uh, broader market. We have Skyworks Solutions, which is also a, a lot of um, disk and, and uh, computer high tech. We have Starbucks. Those are all on Tuesday. On Wednesday, we don't have any of the Big Mac 7 stocks. And so what we do have, though, this is for the, the broader market, so the S&P, we have Boeing. Boeing comes out on Wednesday. And so that'll be interesting because we know that they just had a little problem, but supposedly everybody's going to be back to flying their uh, 737 MAX 9s. So we have more in terms of uh, pharmaceuticals. Uh, they are got a lot. We have MasterCard on Wednesday. And so that can have a pull. And then we're talking interest rates and we're talking just how 
how things are going. Um, Thursday is our next big day, big day. Thursday, we have Amazon and Apple. And so much can rest on both of them. I mean, Amazon is just done nothing but going up and going up and going up and going up and going up. And they're really thinking that there's going to be a big increase in Amazon's earnings. Now, we're hearing like 80 cents versus 12 in the year ago period. So with a big revenue rise. So this is, this is, could be a biggie. But Apple, now questionable, right? Are they going to blow the doors off? Are they going to, are they going to make a major announcement? Are they going to talk about their virtual whatever? Maybe, don't know. So also on Thursday, I don't really see anything else that could rock the world in terms of the broader market or the NASDAQ. So those are the big ones that are really coming out next week. Now, economic data. Monday, we got nothing. Tuesday, we have uh, job openings. It's rocked it before and consumer confidence. On Wednesday, we have ADP employment. Chicago Business Barom uh, Barometer, but the major, major, first that ADP employment, that's going to rock it one way or the other. And then at, at 2 p.m. Eastern, the Fed interest rate decision. So that's Wednesday. Thursday, we start back. Initial jobless claims, U.S. productivity, uh, manu uh, S&P manufacturing, PMI final, ISM manufacturing. Those are big. And then on Friday, we have the non-payroll, non-farm non payrolls. In other words, the employment situation numbers. So we got non-farm payrolls, unemployment rate, hourly wages, et cetera. We have factory orders and consumer sentiment, the final. So pretty heavy duty week in terms of economic stuff as well. So this has been a little bit more extended because I've included a lot more. And... Um, Unless something really drastic happens tomorrow, uh, when Globex opens, our next update will be the Elliott Wave update on Monday, January the 29th. Have a great balance of the weekend.